Welcome to the Gold Collection, a 24 karat guide through A to Z, shining the spotlight on the best of the best from the world of entertainment. B is for biography. Beautiful. BAFTA. Benchmark. Broadway. Blues. Behind the scenes. And more. Today, the Gold Collection is brought to you by the letter B, and B stands for Biography. No one deserves a biopic more than the legendary musician Ray Charles. I hear like you see. Like the movie Ray the had Jamie Foxx take on the title role in a film that. which detailed yeah. Charles's life oh, following his kidding. humble beginnings <laughs> to his meteoric rise to stardom. The film also tackled the issue of Ray's blindness, his battles against his own personal demons, which included drug use and womanizing, racism, not to mention his awe-inspiring talent that revolutionized American popular music. All of y'all going straight to hell! If all of y'all want me to keep playing, let me hear you say amen. amen. Another noteworthy biopic is The Aviator, a film which stars Leonardo DiCaprio and chronicles the life of Howard Hughes. The film focuses on a 20-year period in the life of Hughes, who went from film-producing wonderkind in the late 1920s to aviation genius of the 1940s before slipping into the madness that plagued him until he died in 1976. Oh, God. There goes our meal ticket. While many biopic have been based around the life of the eccentric billionaire, this was the most successful, receiving 11 Academy Award nominations, more than any other film in 2004. Biopics are renowned for both box office success and their ability to attract award recognition. The 2001 Ali was no exception. The film had the blessing of Muhammad Ali and was, at the time, the most expensive biopic ever, costing over 100 million US dollars. You can go to Sweden, everybody knows that I am the champ. The picture charts a dramatic 10-year period beginning in 1964. For the role, Will Smith put on more than 12 kilograms and underwent rigorous training to achieve the boxer's physique. The result was worth it, earning him an Oscar nomination. B is for beautiful, and the following celebrities are very easy on the eyes. One of Hollywood's most beautiful stars is Catherine Zeta-Jones. The Oscar winner has an exotic quality that gives her both a mysterious edge and a welcoming charm. With her dark features, curvaceous figure and flair for style, she instantly commands attention when appearing on any red carpet. Catherine often plays strong, independent characters on screen, but they too possess an elegance and grace. Always feminine and always chic, this Hollywood beauty knows how to look the part. Our next beauty is Bond girl Halle Berry. Not only is she one of Hollywood's highest paid actresses, but she is often hailed as one of Hollywood's best dressed stars. And donning outfits like these, it's easy to see why. Her beauty rarely goes unnoticed. In fact, the gown she wore to the 2002 Oscar ceremony has been voted the event's most popular. Halle's natural beauty helped her become the face of the cosmetics giant Revlon. Just another example confirming what we all know. Halle Berry is stunning. And if we're talking about beautiful actresses, who can go past the exquisite Charlize Theron? Charlize's career began as a model after she won a contest at age 16. Her big smile, glossy blonde hair and tall, slim figure makes her the perfect Hollywood starlet. 
Her beauty, however, takes a backseat to her acting. For her Academy Award-winning role playing Aileen Wernos in Monster, Charlize willingly gained over 10 kilograms, proving that there was more to her than just a pretty face. What do you think? You can't kill people. That's who? is for British Academy of Film and Television Arts, also known as BAFTA. BAFTA's annual awards ceremony always manages to bring out stars of both stage and screen. They all walk the red carpet of the glittering event that's considered by many in the movie industry as a reliable forecast of who will win Oscars at the following month's American Academy Awards. Um, thank you for your charmingly ebullient applause and welcome to the greatest occasion in the British or indeed any Northern European film calendar. For actors and directors, BAFTA awards provide international recognition of excellence, popularity and acclaim. Wow! Of course, sometimes the excitement just becomes too much and some actors just zone out. Established in 1947, the Academy is made up of 1,800 members, but the annual film and television award ceremony is not the only thing the registered charity hosts. Their facilities include both the Princess Anne and the Run Run Shaw theatres, which host screenings, lectures, seminars and conferences. But for the public, the award ceremony is the highlight. A chance for the best of the best to receive well-deserved award recognition. B is for bouquets. One film that has received more than its fair share of bouquets and accolades is Clint Eastwood's Million Dollar Baby. Not only was the film praised by critics, but it went on to win four Academy Awards, two Golden Globes and two Screen Actors Awards. The girl tends to be coming along. Almost like someone's been helping her. I've seen you looking at me. Yeah, out of pity. Don't you say that if it ain't true. Clint Eastwood alone won himself a Director Guild Award, two Oscars and a Golden Globe, just to name a few, after he both directed and starred in the boxing drama. That you're a girl. Santana has also garnered bouquets and awards, most notably for his 1999 release, Supernatural. The album sold over 14 million copies and went on to receive a staggering 11 Grammy nominations. Santana eventually won eight Grammys, including Record of the Year, Album of the Year, Best Rock Album and Song of the Year. Supernatural remains the best-selling album by a Latin artist. Over to television for a series that has won more Emmys than any other show in TV history. The comedy series Frasier began in 1993 as a spin-off from the popular sitcom Cheers. It continued to entertain audiences up until its final episode in 2004. I'm a bit psychic. <laughs> Over the years, Frasier garnered critical success and the cast and crew were constantly rewarded. The comedy won a record-breaking 37 Emmys over 11 years, including five consecutive Best Comedy Awards. So it looks like it was bouquets all around for Frasier. is for Broadway, because there's no business like show business. Before there was television and the internet, there was Broadway. The name came from a street in New York, 
but it now defines an entire area in Midtown Manhattan, where you'll find the city's primary theatres and the most in-demand shows. What happens in Camelot stays in Camelot. From Monty Python's Spamalot to Phantom of the Opera, the Broadway stage accommodates both the modern and the classic, with one intention, to entertain. Broadway is one of New York's major tourist attractions. The mere mention of it connotes images of bright lights, packed houses, standing ovations, and of course, colorful characters singing and dancing. If you happen to be in the theatrical hub of America, you're likely to see shows like Sweeney Todd, The Producers, Chicago, Mamma Mia, and Hairspray. So if you're looking to take in dinner and a show, why not head to New York's Broadway? B is for benchmark, and no one has set the bar higher than these overachievers. Pioneering the marriage of live action and digital animation was the team behind Gollum. His intense facial expressions and primitive stance were all based around the live movements of actor Andy Serkis, who played the character in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Circus wore a jumpsuit speckled with sensors, which turned his movements into golems, while facial animators drew on Circus's own expressions to enhance emotion. Much of the technology used was created specifically for the trilogy, bringing special effects to a whole new level. Another film that raised the bar was Fahrenheit 9-11, which remains to this day the highest grossing documentary. In its first three days, the Michael Moore film took 21.8 million US dollars, making it the first documentary to debut at number one at the box office. How could Congress pass this Patriot Fahrenheit 9-11's box office total stands at over 119 million US dollars, a benchmark that it's sure to remain for many years to come. This is Michael Moore. I would like to read to you the USA Patriot Act. Let the eagle soar. Another documentary that was way ahead of its time was What's Happening, The Beatles in the USA. The documentary depicts the beginning of the British music invasion that reshaped American popular culture. While it was recut in 2004, the original film, for which the cameramen had unprecedented access, is widely seen as setting a benchmark for rock and roll films. The director, Albert Maisels, and his brother David are recognised as pioneers of direct cinema, setting a new standard for musical documentaries. What's the difference if I say... B is for blues. I'll go away when I know I'll come back home. If we're talking about blues, you can't go past Billie Holiday. With a trademark gardenia in her hair, she is remembered for her beautiful voice and unfortunately for her tragic life. My life is just despair, but I don't care when he takes me in his arms. The world is bright, all right. In 2003, director Martin Scorsese created a series called The Blues. The series traced the roots of blues from the traditional sounds of African culture to the Mississippi Delta. Scorsese said he'd launched the project because younger generations of artists should know the history of their art. The same year that Scorsese made his series, the US Congress declared it the Year of the Blues. In celebration of that, a variety of music legends met to become Blues Brothers. You know I've had my share. B 
BB King and Eric Clapton were just some of the big names who gathered for Blowin' the Blues Away. It looks like after all these years, they're all still singing the blues. B is for a billion, dollars that is, and here are some celebrities whose bank balances show over nine digits. It appears that J.K. Rowling must have a bit of magic on her side, with her fictional character Harry Potter helping her bank account reach well into the billions. Miss J.K. Rowling, then. Not only is she one of the few self-made female billionaires, but she's the first author worth over a billion dollars. Oprah Winfrey also finds herself on our billion dollar list, and if she's giving away cars to everyone in her audience, then she must have more than loose change to throw around. These two women don't just own billions, they're one in a billion. Someone who's no stranger to bag loads of money is Microsoft boss Bill Gates. Not only has he created the world's largest company, but with it he has gone on to become the world's richest man, as well as the biggest donator to charitable causes. Not bad for a guy who dropped out of Harvard. His assets reportedly total 51 billion US dollars. But you know what they say about all work and no play? For studios, making movies is often a hit or miss process. One film that has paid dividends is James Cameron's Titanic. While the ship sank long ago, the film continues to rake in the dough. Not only did it excel at the box office, Titanic went on to become a best-selling VHS and the first DVD to ship more than one million units. The Lord of the Rings trilogy also saw a huge turnover. Peter Jackson's Oscar-winning series made a staggering 2.9 billion US dollars that's almost a billion per film. The Lord of the Rings did, however, take a record away from Titanic. When Return of the King debuted, it took only nine weeks to become the fastest movie to gross one billion US dollars. B is for ballet. Ballet has been around since the 1400s during the Renaissance. What started off as noblemen and women entertaining their rulers has gone on to become an internationally enriched art form. Over the generations, ballet required more and more awareness and skill. It was no longer possible for untrained people to participate. Professional ballet dancers began appearing in the 1970s. Ballet continued to evolve, with women learning to dance on their toes, men advancing their leaps, and bulky costumes slimmed down. When you're talking about modern choreography, you can't go past Rudolf Nureyev, who was considered both brilliant and temperamental. Nureyev often said after he danced, he was one dance closer to the end of his career. In 1993, his life and career ended when he died at the early age of 54. Today's choreographers experiment using both new and classic forms and techniques, while the performers work tirelessly to make their unnatural movements appear completely natural. B is for behind the scenes, which is where we're about to take you. Oh, 
Behind the scenes of the Oscar-winning Sideways, the wine-drinking cast had to drink non-alcoholic wine. Backstage of Bette Midler's biggest and most theatrical show to date, Kiss My Brass, she revealed how much touring takes its toll. Considering she's the main event, she'd want to take care of that voice of hers. In the film Alexander, Oscar winner actress Angelina Jolie played Olympias, Colin Farrell's character's mother. Behind the scenes, however, she was less than a year older than the Irish-born actor. Behind the scenes of Andrew Lloyd Webber's cinematic version of The Phantom of the Opera, actress Emmy Rossum struggled to eat while wearing her corset. The only thing that she could eat in between takes was ice cream, as it was able to slip down her throat as it melted. The 2005 film The Legend of Zorro is a sequel to the 98 action adventure The Mask of Zorro, both starring Antonio Banderas and Catherine Zeta-Jones. Behind the scenes, the character Zorro, or Don Diago, was always supposed to have a Spanish accent. Antonio, however, was the first Spanish actor to play the part. Meanwhile, co-star Catherine struggled to perform when it came to energetic sword fights. She found her period-style corset too restrictive. But you wouldn't know it, unless you were behind the scenes. B is for Bob Hope. Please, my sponsor. Come on, you're going with us. Yeah. Well, all right. All right. I'm Legendary going with comedian Bob Hope is without a doubt one of the most, if not the most, popular entertainers in history. His physical comedy mixed with his rapid line delivery quickly saw the aspiring comedian hit mainstream through stage performances, radio programs, television shows, and feature films. A bit of my back. <laughs> you make a pass. Virtually running his own joke factory, Bob employed almost 100 writers. Through these writers, he was able to draw on a collection of hundreds of thousands of jokes that specialised in sexual double entendre, gags about his ski nose, and lines that paid homage to his decided lack of humility and willingness to con anyone. Bob's talent was equaled only by his humanitarian efforts and he liked nothing better than entertaining the troops. He supported the US servicemen and women during World War II, Korea, Vietnam and even during the 1991 Gulf War. Very happy to be back here at Chu Kuchi. Kuchi, that's Vietnamese. For you on it, you can have it. Comedian Bob Hope certainly left the world with a lot of thankful memories. That's all for today's Gold Collection. We'll see you next time for the Letter C.